Technology and the modern lifestyle have replaced many traditional activities. The huge exception is putting up salmon in the summer. This continues in every village. There have been changes in techniques and methods, yet the intensity and importance of fishing has not faded. Long ago, before freezers and canning procedures were available in the villages, people dried fish to the point that they could be stored in the cache without going sour or getting moldy. Fish prepared like that taste good, but it's so dry it's rather difficult to eat. When people jar or can fish, they usually cut them in strips or as flat fish, soak them in solutions of brine and a host of other secret ingredients. Then they smoke them for two or three days. After they have dried a bit and picked up the smoke taste, they're pressure cooked at 15 pounds pressure for 90 minutes and sealed in jars and cans. Every family has a favorite process. Smoked salmon is like candy any time of the year. Many people still dry fish to completion and put them in the cache as in old times. This requires more skill because the fish are exposed to hazards for a longer period of time. There are two ways that drying fish can spoil. The first is by blowflies which can create maggots. Smoke keeps the blowflies away. If a fish has a dry crust on the surface, blowflies can't successfully lay their eggs. The other way fish can spoil is by going sour as a result of bacteria. The prevention of this is quickly drying the fish before souring can take place. Bacteria need moisture. The first day in the smokehouse, the fish is suspended close to the smoke. Fish are hung with enough space between them to allow lots of fresh air. The location of the smokehouse is important. It should be on dry ground in a place where there is a good breeze. Smoking is a passive process and dry fish require a dry environment. Different families use different types of wood for smoking the fish. Some use birch, some use cottonwood, some use alder. No one uses spruce unless there's no other alternative. Our family uses cottonwood for fish to cut for dogs as cottonwood is easy to get. We use alder for smoking fish for human consumption and we use a bit of birch in rainy weather to provide heat to accelerate the drying process. Birch tends to taste a little strong if used in excess. We move the smudge part around to respond to the breezes blowing through the smokehouse. Most families who are serious about fishing have a fish raft. Wire extends into the water that allows fresh water to flow over the fish, but doesn't allow the fish to escape. Fish can stay in the fish raft for many hours without spoiling. Most fish rafts have a cutting table covered with spruce bark or other rough surface that's easy to clean. There's a variety of ways to cut fish and every family feels like its way is best. It probably is for their smokehouse and location. Upriver fish are different from downriver fish. River valleys are different from the tundra. Fish are cut differently in rainy weather than they are in sunny weather. Fish must be cut thin during rainy times. They can be cut thicker when the forecast calls for dry weather. The main idea is to cut the fish thin enough so they dry before going sour. At the same time, there should be as little waste as possible. The question is always, how much do we leave on the backbone? And what do we do with the meat that we have to leave on the backbone? King salmon is so large, people usually cut them into strips that will dry quickly. Red and silver salmon are often cut into blanket fish or into fillets that balance on both sides of the fish pole. Spruce poles are used because their rough surface keeps the fish from sliding off. Salmon prepared by either method is prized by rural and urban family members and is a most welcome gift. Most people set or drift with their nets. Upriver people tend to set nets as the current is too swift to safely drift and there's lots of eddies. Downriver people tend to drift because there are not as many eddies as there are families who want to fish. Fish wheels are still a frequent sight on the Yukon, but on the Kuskokwim, the demand for large numbers of fish disappeared with dog teams and the advent of snow machines. There is a considerable pride and a sense of satisfaction that comes from a successful salmon season. Fish camp is a highlight of the year. Families who fish out of the village homes miss some of the magical moments. Some upriver people have the opportunity to dip net, but dipping locations are not common. 
Economic demands force many village people to work at 9 to 5 jobs, but those who are able to escape the routine are most thankful for the chance to reconnect with the resources of the land.